Good morning, Simon. Good morning. How are you? Great. Thank you. Good. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and um, the organization that you're a part of? Sure. Well, I'm, my name is Simon Cook, and I'm the chief executive of uh, MSI Reproductive Choices, formerly known as uh, Mary Stubbs International, and we re renamed this week. And we have, for the last 45 years, operated in, in increasing number of countries, now 37 countries around the world, primarily in low-income or uh, developing countries. And we provide um, contraception safe abortion services to uh, up to 10 million uh, clients a year, and primarily, I would say, women and girls. Um, but also in a, a sizable number of men. And the, the, the per real purpose of the, of the organization is to, is to close the gap in unmet need for contraception, because there are 230 million women and girls across the world who want con contraception. They, they want to prevent unwanted pregnancies, but don't have access to, to contraception. And in many countries, very limited access to safe abortion, and therefore they resort to unsafe abortion. And so our, our role is to close that gap and make a contraception universal. So by 2030, no, nobody will, who wants access to contraception will not be able to access it. And, and no woman or girl will ever have to have an unsafe abortion. Wonderful. And uh, in relation to that, how do things like the global gag rule um, affect your, your work? Uh, well, very significantly, because uh, from 2017, with the new Trump administration, um, MSI in particular, only one or two other organizations, uh, you know, walked away from USAID um, funding, and we were one of them, uh, because we, we are very, very committed as part of our uh, vision to promote um, uh, um, safe abortion provision and universally. So quite clearly, we, we couldn't access US funding, and we walked away from approximately $30 million a year of funding that we had under the Obama administration. And that obviously means that the, the gag rule itself and then the chilling effect on those organizations who do re, uh, who are recipients of, of US government funding means that uh, it's very difficult for those organizations to promote or refer women to a safe abortion service. What we know happens as a result is those women or girls that they will still have an abortion. They will just go to a backstreet and provider or a, or a quack or a, or, or a um, do it yourself and put themselves at significant risk. So, so what, what the gag rule does is it, it does not prevent abortion. It simply makes abortion less safe or, or unsafe and increases the likelihood that women are going to harm themselves and, and then end up in the health system, obviously having other forms of treatment in terms of, in terms of uh, you know, either life-saving or remedial treatment. Uh, very, very damaging. And it's, this, this particular version of the gag rule has been extremely uh, stringent, very difficult and has caused I mean, absolute undue harm to many women and girls unnecessarily. What a shame. And how do you see then work like World Vasectomy Day um, and kind of like opening the conversation around um, contracepting in the world to not only women where, where it's been historically, but also to men? How do you see that, that work? Well, well it, it's, it's, tre it's tremendously important because as I say, I mean, we, we refer a lot to women and girls because that, those are the, mainly the people that we see because men are not, are not, not involved or they're either involved in, um, in, 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 in making sure that their, their wives or their girlfriends will, will have as many, the, as the number of children that they want, but they very rarely will take full responsibility for and for you know family planning, and so at least sole responsibility. So whilst we do see a lot of men coming forward for condoms and short short term methods, uh, as you know, I mean vasectomy is still very very um, you know unsupported or un under un uh, under un understood in many of the countries where we work and stigmatized. Mm -hmm. You know men men feel that it will interrupt their fertility somehow or make them feel less masculine. Mm -hmm. uh, let's face it, men, men are afraid of going to doctors and surgery of any sort. So. Um, and myself included, when I talked to Jonathan about this a couple of years ago, I thought, well, do I really want to go through <laughs> the process? And yet we do provide vasectomies. We, we, we see many done extremely well using non-scalpel method. Uh, it's, it's, it's painless. And I've seen it done and, and, and it's always a great result. So uh, it's just a matter, as I was saying earlier um, to Jonathan, that first of all, you need to get the awareness. You need to you know, have people who've had a vasectomy is promoting the service and make sure there are doctors and providers who are trained to do it. Uh, it's not complicated, it takes very little time and very low um, pain, but you know, men, men are difficult to persuade to take responsibility for this. Yeah, and so 
in expanding kind of these these services, what do you see this? What what gives you satisfaction about um, being able to extend the MSI's uh, services to men? Well, it, it's it's appropriate that men play their role in in, uh, in making sure that they they are planning their families and supporting their wives as well. So 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 often it is the, the woman who bears the full um, responsibility of unwanted pregnancies, for example. And uh, you know it's it's much easier for men to walk away from this the situation. So for us, it's it's about get, getting men involved in the process. Whether whether it is about a woman contracepting or the man himself, it's making sure they're taking proper responsibility that they're that they're part of the, the the conversation. And where it's where it is appropriate for a man to to take responsibility, have a vasectomy, then making sure that those those uh, that the, the awareness is there, it's destigmatized, and that there's they understand it's safe and it's. You know, it's a manly thing to do. It's not. Uh, it's, it's not some sign of uh, of giving in. It, it it is the appropriate masculine uh, response. So, and many many of the cultures where we we operate is that masculinity and that sense of uh, of being the the head of the family, which is which is under threat. Mm -hmm. But having, having said that, in in countries where where there's more awareness around vasectomy, and, and Jonathan mentioned Bangladesh. Yeah, we do see men coming forward. It's not. It's not. It's not difficult once you initiate the process. Just getting started is very difficult. So essentially, it's about information. It's about information. It's about making. I think particularly to men, making sure that they're not afraid, that they feel that it's it's uh, something that is not going to you know put them at risk, um, to, and to normalizing it. Whenever something is normalized and made. Um, commonplace using word, and word of mouth or, or referral, then vasectomy will become a much more common practice. And as I was saying, you know, Australia is is the, our fastest growing vasectomy country because we're talking about it and, and in a sort of lighthearted and fun way. And we, you know, the, we've got a current campaign talking about the crown jewels and you know the head of the family, and so it's a. Uh, it's it's good to make light of it and, and to make it something which is just normalised and and, and it, clearly then having the, tra the the training in place and the provider training to make sure that uh, that we can we can meet the demand. We see demand actually in the UK um, re really increasing now as well, and we've 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 just set up uh, some dedicated um, um, services in the UK. So it's 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 increasing, but it's it's a bit slow. Well, thank you so much for your time, Simon, and for sharing with us. You're very welcome. It's nice to see you, and um, good luck. Thank you.